MoneyGram owns about 5% of the global remittance market. How will this deal work? Emily, it's great to be back. Thank you. Uh, the deal is a big step, I think, for Ripple, but it's even a bigger step for the overall industry. As you know well, there's been a lot of excitement around what blockchain and what digital assets and crypto can mean for the industry. And I think it's the reason why players like Facebook are diving in also. But we haven't yet seen much beyond experimentation. And it, really at Ripple, I think we are the market leader because we have matured aggressively and we're really solving real problems for real customers. MoneyGram is just the manifestation of that. And as the second largest global remittance company, we're able to have a big impact with one customer and one partner in this. Now, as I understand it, Western Union tested Ripple to use for its network, but it ended up being more ex expensive than its current network. Uh, is MoneyGrab actually saving money by using Ripple? You know, actually, what Western Union said was that, you know, they've been around for decades. And what they said is that in our beta time, the time of the product hadn't yet launched, they said that we matched the efficiency of what they were already optimized. So my view on that was they had spent decades getting to an efficiency that we matched with a beta product. So I, I was actually really pleased that Western Union could come out and say, we're already as good as their, their, you know, the decades they had invested in building out that, that capability. With MoneyGram, we know out of the gates we can actually make their system much more efficient. And the key reason is today, both Western Union and MoneyGram, they pre-fund accounts around the world so they can make payments. So MoneyGram and Western Union have negative working capital. What our products allow those companies to do is to not pre-fund and to shoot payments in real time. And that's a massive savings in terms of the efficiency, not just in terms of what is the cost in FX, but the capital costs, the outlays, that it's really a dormant asset when you pre-fund those is sitting there waiting for people to make payments. And that's really the transformational thing that XRP as an extremely efficient digital asset allows for the industry. How much equity did Ripple get in this deal? Well, what we committed to do is to invest up to $50 million. We'll end up owning somewhere between about 6 or 7% and 10% of the company. They're going to call. They decide over the course of the next year how much of that $50 million they want to call down. At close, they've called down $30 million at a price of $4.10 per share. So we're excited to be shareholders because we think that actually it's been an undervalued asset. As you may know, uh, Ant Financial tried to buy MoneyGram over a year ago. That was ultimately blocked by CFIUS. But we think it's a, a really undervalued undervalued and strategic asset in the overall payments landscape, we couldn't be more excited to have a shared vision of how digital assets can change the nature of how liquidity is managed for payment providers globally. Right, a potential $1.2 billion deal that was blocked by the U.S. government. So what's next? Do you have plans to try to gain share in other existing money transfer services? Well, what's next for us is to continue to build out and expand the number of corridors where we're live today. We work with over 200 banks and financial institutions around the world today. And with this new product around liquidity, we're now uh, enabling liquidity into the Mexican peso and the Philippine peso. We certainly ex expect to be much broader than that, but we've only been alive with this product for about six or seven months. So I feel like we made a tremendous progress in a short amount of time. We're gonna continue to invest with the customers we have today, as well as expand the number of corridors we support globally. All right, so Facebook, we believe, announcing crypto plans tomorrow. Uh, there's broad speculation that this will be some sort of cryptocurrency that can be used internally within Facebook's walls to make payments on Facebook and within Facebook's other services like Instagram. What's your take? Well, look, I think it's an incredibly positive signal for the overall blockchain and crypto market to have a player like Facebook leaning in. You know, I think there's been obviously a lot of skepticism in the origins of crypto coming from kind of an anti-government and anti-bank point of view to see major ind industry players lean in and participate in the market. I think it's a really positive the overall market. It'll be really interesting to see what part of this, what part of the market they focus on. David Marcus has been an incredible leader and given his experience at PayPal, I expect we'll see them do something very consumer oriented uh, part of the, the, the payment system. But I think it's, you know, I'll, I'll be watching as long as, as alongside everyone else to see uh, what they decide to pursue. And I think what I've heard is the technology isn't quite ready to go live, but sometime in 2020, they'll be out there uh, actually deploying that. For me, what MoneyGram and the stuff we're doing today is the key difference. It's what can we do today with these technologies to solve real problems? And I think it's been really hard for the people following this industry to separate what is noise and what is actual real and pragmatic today. 
Now, that said, do you have any concern that what Facebook will unveil will make Ripple less relevant? I don't think so. I mean, you know, Facebook is obviously a consumer-oriented company, Instagram, WhatsApp. It's a very consumer-oriented company. What Ripple is doing is in really enterprise infrastructure and interconnecting various payment networks around the world. So we're working with some of the biggest banks around the world, small payment providers, and really providing that interoperability between the different networks as opposed to solving a within a network kind of problem. So I think it's, you know, it's just very, very different than uh, what they expect they're going to be doing.